In the last lesson, I told you that there is a little bit more to covalent versus ionic bonding than we cover in year 10 and 11. This is due to something called electronegativity. Covalent through to ionic bonding should be thought of as a continuum, going from fully covalent through to fully ionic bonds, with most bonding sitting somewhere between the two. Electronegativity is the ability of an atom in a molecule to attract the bonding electrons towards itself. It is based on how strongly an atom holds on to its own electron and attracts other atoms' electrons. The more electronegative an atom is, the closer the bonding electrons will sit to it and the more time the bonding electrons will spend around that atom. So the bonding electrons are those electrons that are shared between two atoms and form the bond between those two atoms. Think of electronegativity like a tug of war where the flag is in the middle of the rope and each person wants that flag to be on their half. The stronger a person is, the stronger their pull is on the rope. The red flag will be closer to the stronger person and spend more of their time in their half. Every now and again, the weaker person might get the flag into their half but it won't be there long before it is pulled back towards the stronger person. It is the same when two atoms share their electrons. The bonding electrons will sit closer to the more electronegative atom and spend more of their time around that atom and less of their time around the less electronegative atom. Electronegativity is measured on the pooling electronegativity scale. You don't need to remember the name of this though. But what it does is give elements a number up to four that represents the electronegativity. The higher the number, the more electronegative they are. Fluorine has an electronegativity of four and is the most electronegative element. Nobel gases are not given a value because they are inactive due to already having a full outer shell and being stable. Electronegativity increases as you move across the periodic table from left to right. This is because the number of protons an atom has also increases as you move, move across the periodic table. As the atoms are all in the same row, they all have the same number of shells. With the same number of shells, but more positive protons, the atom's pull on the negative electron increases. So the protons are like muscles on those people in the tug of war. The more muscles they have, or the more people they have on one side, the stronger they are and the better they will be at pulling the rope towards them. Electronegativity decreases as you go down the periodic table. Even though the number of protons increases as you go down the periodic table, so too does the number of shells. These electron shells are layers of negative charges. The more shells or layers, the further away the protons are from the bonding electrons. This makes it harder for the protons to hold on to the electrons as the positive charge of the protons is offset by all of those negative electrons in each shell. So think about this like having to stand one meter away from the rope. One person might have more muscles, but if they have to stand away from the rope where they are just holding on by their stretched out fingertips, all of those muscles are going to be no good to them. As they can't get a good hold on the rope, they won't be able to use their muscles to pull the flag towards them. It is the same thing with an atom. It may have lots of protons, but if those protons are being shielded by lots of shells and with those electrons in the shell, they can't get a good pull on those bonding electrons in their valent shell. So their electronegativity decreases. If the two atoms forming a bond are the same, like in the case of the oxygen molecule, they will have the exact same electronegativity. So the difference between their electronegativity is zero. Or when we go 3.5, the electronegativity of oxygen minus 3.5, the electronegativity of the other oxygen the difference is nothing, it's zero. They both have the exact same pull on those bonding electrons that they share. So these electrons are going to spend equal amounts of time 
around each oxygen, and they're going to spend the majority of their time in between the two oxygens in the molecule. Therefore, the atom is a fully covalent bond. We call these bonds nonpolar. In actual fact, if the difference in electronegativity is less than 0 0.5, the bond difference is so small that we say the electrons are shared evenly. The electrons will still spend slightly more time around the more electronegative atom, but we say that the time difference is negligible, and so we assume it's a pure covalent bond. However, in the exam, you don't get electronegativity values, so you can assume nonpolar covalent bonds occur only between the same atom. If we go back to that tug of war, the flag will move between the two areas occasionally as both people pull on the rope, but most of the time it will stay in the middle as the people are pulling with the exact same amount of strength. If the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms forming a bond is greater than 1.6, the bond will be ionic. Here, chlorine has an electronegativity of 3, whereas sodium's electronegativity is only 0 0.9. As the difference between their electronegativities is 2.1, greater than 1.6, the bond is ionic. The very electronegative atom, the chlorine, will pull sodium's valence electron and keep it. The sodium has lost its electron and chlorine has gained it. Sodium's electronegativity is so low compared to chlorine that it cannot pull the electron back. This leaves sodium as a positive ion and chloride as a negative ion, and the ionic bond is the attraction between the oppositely charged ions. This is like a man playing tug of war against a small child. The child does not stand a chance. The adult will pull on that rope and keep the flag on their side. The child is not strong enough to pull it back onto their side at all. If the difference in electronegativity between the two atoms is between 0 0.5 and 1.6, the atoms will form a bond that is somewhere between covalent and ionic. Some books, though, will look at it between 0 0.4 and 1.8 as being between covalent and ionic. So it just depends, it's somewhere in that range. The bonding electrons will still be shared between the two atoms, but will spend the majority of their time around the more electronegative atom. This is called a polar bond, and we will look more at this in a later lesson. But most importantly, don't panic. You are not expected to work out the type of bonding between two atoms, as you won't have electronegativity values in your exam. Instead, assume if it is the same atom forming a bond, it is fully covalent, also called pure covalent. If it is a metal and a non-metal forming a bond, it is ionic. And if it is two non-metals that are forming a bond, and they aren't the same non-metal, then it will be a polar bond, somewhere between covalent and ionic.